This is Nick Nielsen, Mad Scientist to Muscle, and what I've got for you today here is what I call double negative training. Now what this is going to do is deal with the problem of strength curves. For example, best example of this is doing bench press. Now when you're doing negatives for a bench press, it's the same issue you run into when you're doing a regular bench press. You can only use as much weight as the weakest point of your range of motion allows, which is your sticking point, usually a few inches off your chest. Now, when you're doing negative training, you can use a hell of a lot more weight in this top half of the range of motion than you can in the bottom. So basically you're wasting this entire top half with a lighter weight. When you come down to that sticking point, that's when it gets tough and that's when you're actually getting the negative, the benefits from the negative training. So what we're going to do here with double negative training is we're going to split that into two parts. You are going to focus the first part on the entire range of motion. So set up in the rack. I definitely recommend using the rack over a partner for this one. Set up in the rack, lower the bar to your chest, and I'll explain a little bit more about that process here. When you're here, either you have a partner help you back up, or you roll it off your chest, sneak out from under the bar, you go back and you raise one side of the bar at a time and put it back on the rails. This is the way to do it by yourself. Definitely use the rack when you're doing it by yourself, clearly. Now, the problem you run into with the bench press, like I said, is the sticking point in the range of motion. So the first half of this exercise is going to be done at about 100 to 105% of your one rep max. Um, my one RM right now, approximately 250 pounds, so I've got 260 on the bar here, which is within that 100 to 105% window. What you're gonna be doing here, unracking, lowering the bar, once you get to that sticking point, that's when you really wanna fight the negative. So, once you hit that negative point, basically you can lower it under control up until that point. Once you hit that point, you're going to actually try and press the bar. So this is more or just about even with your 1RM. So once you get to that point, you're actually trying to press the bar. So you're actively ripping the hell out of your muscle fibers because they're trying to contract while the weight is pushing them down. That's a true negative. A true negative should be a painful experience. You should be fighting the weight all the way down rather than simply just controlling it. So there's a big difference in intent there. So that's one of the keys no matter what kind of negative training you're doing. So when you're done three to four reps with the full range, you're going to raise the level of the safety bars. Now I'm going to put this up two notches. You're going to add some more weight onto the bar. You want to aim for around 120 to 125 percent of your 1RM. So based on the 250 that I was saying, that's going to mean about 50 pounds I'm going to put on the bar. So I've got a couple of 25s ready. I'm just going to slide them on the bar and go. Once you've done the three to four full, you're going to do another three to four partial range. So the moment you unrack the bar, it should be challenging and you should be fighting that all the way down to where the updated rail position is, which is above the sticking point. So again, three to four reps of that setting the bar back on the rails, unracking, and going again. Now, if you can get more than three to four reps on each one, then you probably will want to increase the weight a bit. A good negative should be done in about three to four seconds with this kind of thing, because you, you don't want it so light that you're just sitting there holding the bar. You actually want that bar to be heavy enough that it's driving you back down. So, I'm gonna give you a quick demo here, show you what it looks like. When you've done your reps for one set, take about three minutes rest this is a very demanding, tough on lean muscle fibers and kind of tough on the nervous system. So let's take a crack at it. Each rep does take a bit of time to reset. Be quicker if you're not doing it by yourself. Helps so you don't have a rack that's a bit shredded too. Alright.
Here's the weight. This is going up to 310. I've added 50 pounds on to the 260. I did notice that dropped too fast, so I'm going to adjust the weight. I'm going to do 30 instead of 50. Again, I want to control that weight all the way to the rails here. Fight it rather than drop it. So that's the concept behind double negatives. Essentially, you are addressing the different parts of the strength curve of the exercise separately. Now, the key is having a power rack, obviously, and really fighting that negative once you hit that point. So on the first half of the set, control it here and then fight it here. On the second half, you want to unrack, fight it all the way to the rack. This is also going to give you a lot of practice unracking heavy weight, which is essential to do properly when you really want to get into max bench pressing. So give this technique a shot. Do uh, two to three total sets of this with about three minutes rest in between. And uh, this will help you boost your strength. For me, I don't find it as good for building muscle, but definitely uh, excellent for building strength, especially in the connective tissue and in the nervous system.